In this video, we will practice questions relating to polynomial and behavior. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.6. If you appreciate this type of content, please don't forget to hit the like button. Number 1. For polynomial function h, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x is infinity, and the limit as x approaches positive infinity of h of x is also infinity. Which of the following must be true about h? Look, h is approaching positive infinity on the left. In other words, it is rising on the left. h is approaching positive infinity on the right as well. So it's rising on the right. The fact that the end behavior is the same on the left and the right, positive infinity both times, means that the degree has to be even. In addition, the end behavior on the right tells you whether or not you have a positive leading coefficient. So the fact that we have a positive end behavior on the right tells us that we have a positive leading coefficient. So the answer is B. The degree of H is even and the leading coefficient is positive. Number two, for the polynomial function F, all we know is that the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is negative infinity. Which of the following expressions could define f of x? When we talk about the limit as x approaches positive infinity, we're talking about the right end behavior. And if the right end behavior is negative, that indicates that the leading coefficient is negative. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest degree term. Here are the highest degree terms in each expression. In other words, these are the leading terms of each function. Only one of these has a negative leading coefficient. So the answer is B. Number three, the function G is given by this polynomial. Which of the following correctly describes the end behavior of G as the input values decrease without bound. For starters, when they say the input values decrease without bound, they're saying as x approaches negative infinity. So a and c are out. So we are looking for the left end behavior, but it's easier actually to start with the right end behavior, which is going to match the sign of the leading coefficient. This x to the sixth power gives us the highest degree. So the leading coefficient is positive two. That means that the right end behavior of the polynomial is approaching positive infinity. Now the degree is going to tell us whether the left end behavior is the same or the opposite. Since the degree six is even, that means the left and right end behavior are the same. So the left end behavior must also be positive infinity. That means the answer must be B. Number four, sketch a polynomial function on the axes provided that has the given properties and the domain of negative infinity to positive in infinity. I'm just going to start drawing and then I'm going to make modifications uh, as I run into other criteria. So first it tells me that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is negative infinity. So this tells me that I need a function that falls on the left. So maybe something like this. Okay, it's falling on the left. But then I read on and it says the limit as x approaches positive infinity is positive infinity. So far I got lucky because I just happened to draw the right end behavior as positive infinity. But next I see that f of x is less than or equal to zero, when x is less than or equal to one, and when x is between four and six. In other words, f of x needs to be below the x-axis on this interval and this interval. So I'm going to have to redraw this quite a bit. I can't change the end behavior, so I still need the graph to be falling on the left, okay? Um, but I need to bend this around so that it's below the x-axis 
you know, so something like this. All that's left is we need a point of inflection at x equals 4.5. Now, this is a lot really close together. I wish it had been a point of inflection at like negative 2 or something, so we had space to do it. But we're going to have to just really squeeze a point of inflection in right here. Before I do it, just uh, remember that a point of inflection is where the graph changes concavity. So for example, um, from concave up to concave down, that would be a point of inflection. So I'm going to have to somehow squeeze that in right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but here's 4.5, and I hope you can see that I've drawn it so that it's concave up from 4 to 4.5, and then it's concave down for a little bit, uh, but it has to bend back around so that it can uh, get above the x-axis by the time we get to 6. So um, now I'm going to redraw the rest of it the way it was before. I need a positive end behavior over here on the right. And uh, I need the function to bend back around and become negative. And it needs to go ahead and have that negative end behavior on the left. This graph satisfies all the criteria for number four. Hopefully number five will be easier to draw. G of X has three points of inflection, one global maximum at X equals two, no global minimum. I'm gonna start with that's as much as I can handle right now. So um, this seems to be sort of an overarching thing that needs to happen. So I'm gonna draw this first. We need one global maximum at x equals two. So I'm gonna make this the highest point on the graph. So global maximum at x equals two, and we want no global minimum. Okay, so for starters, I'm just gonna make a really basic graph and I'll make my modifications in a moment. All right, so this sort of uh, upside down parabola that I just drew, has one global maximum at x equals two, and no global minimum, because it keeps going down forever. Now I'm gonna look around at the rest of this mess. I'm gonna make this part happen now. It says g of x is greater than zero when x is between negative two and three. So here's negative two, and here's three. g of x being greater than zero means that it's above the x-axis. So I'm gonna redraw this so that it uh, just becomes above the x-axis between these two points. Actually, the graph that I already have satisfies this criteria. It doesn't say that it has to go from negative to positive right at these numbers. Uh, for any values where uh, x is between negative two and three, that's gonna be if I could just trace it real quick, that's going to be from here to here. That is above the x-axis, so I'm good. Next, all I need are three points of inflection. I think I will put two points of inflection on the left and another point of inflection on the right. So let me erase that part of it. So I need a point of inflection. So I'm going to start off concave down but I need a point of inflection, so kabam, I'm gonna bend and go concave up for a minute, and then kabam, I'm gonna go concave down. So, one point of inflection, another point of inflection. I need one more point of inflection, which I'm going to put on the right-hand side, so it will be easy if I start off concave down, and then bend and go concave up. So that's it. Let me make sure I didn't mess up any of the other criteria. So clearly I have my one, two, three points of inflection. I have one global maximum still at x equals two. There's still no global minimum. Um, understand this is still drifting down. It's less clear because I had to make it concave up. But there's no, uh, like I'm not drawing it so that there's an asymptote or anything. This is still 
still going down forever, uh, so no global minimum. And for uh, x values between negative 2 and positive 3, g of x is above the x-axis throughout this area. So we are good. Number 6. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of h of x is positive infinity. So on the right, I need my function to be rising. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x is also positive infinity. So on the left, I need it to still be rising. Um, it needs to be an even function. So, um, well, with the end behavior on the left and right, rising and rising, positive infinity, positive infinity, uh, that already makes it an even function. So that's kind of automatic. I need it to have four real zeros. So that means it's going to have to uh, hit the x-axis exactly four times. But it says it crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it has two points of inflection. So uh, I need it to hit the x-axis at these two points. In addition, it needs to hit the x-axis at two other points as well. So I think I'll just space them out a little bit. So I think I'll hit here and here. All right, so I'm hit my four zeros, right? That, that will be my four real zeros, including the two that they specifically gave me at negative one and five. So far I have this, but that just leaves the fact that we need to have two points of inflection. So um, I already have some points of inflection, let's count them. The function is concave up for a while, and then right here it switches and becomes concave down. So uh, I'm just going to change colors for a second. So this is one point of inflection. So now I'm concave down, and then it switches and becomes concave up. So this graph happens to already have two points of inflection. So that's it for number six. Let's do one more. J of x has relative extrema at x equals negative four and x equals positive four. It has three real zeros at negative six, zero, and six. I better start there. So we have real zeros at negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, we have real zeros here, here, and here. So the graph has to hit the x-axis at these three points. It needs to be an odd function with a negative leading coefficient. So if it has a negative leading coefficient, that means that the function will be falling on the right, okay? The limit as x approaches positive infinity must equal negative infinity. Here's what I've done so far. The function that I've drawn has three real zeros at negative six, zero, and positive six, and it has a negative leading coefficient because the right end behavior is approaching negative infinity. So now I need to make the other criteria happen. An odd function means it needs to be symmetric around the origin, meaning that if I were to rotate the graph upside down, it would look exactly the same. So um, it's this is close, I just need to be more careful with it. But probably as I make this first criterion happen, I can, uh, that'll help me make it an odd function. So I need relative extrema, that means a local min or a local max, at x equals negative four and x equals positive four. So here is x equals negative four right here. And here's x equals positive four right here. So I'm gonna redraw this to make this a relative min and to make this precisely a relative max. And that should give me the symmetry that I need as well. If I make my relative min 
uh, at a y value of negative 2, and I put my relative max at a y value of positive 2, all I have to do is connect the dots, and that's going to give me the odd symmetry. So it should be something like this. You know what? I just realized that I messed up a little bit right at the beginning because I didn't realize that the graph paper itself is asymmetrical. Uh, it's six to the left, but I have seven squares to the right. So this dot is not in the right spot. So uh, I'm not going to redo the whole video just for that. I'm just going to fix it right now, late in the game. So, okay, now I have real zeros at negative 6, 0, and positive 6. It was at 7 before. So now I can have my symmetry. So this graph has relative extrema at negative 4 and positive 4. It has three real zeros at negative 6, 0, and positive 6. It is an odd function because if I were to rotate this upside down 180 degrees, it would still look the same. And it has a negative leading coefficient because the right end behavior is approaching negative infinity. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.